Hi, I'm Zach Singerman, and welcome to the Gen Z Jews Learning from Leaders series. In this series, I'm interviewing leaders on the topics of anti-Semitism, Israel, and leadership. Today, our guest is Emily Linder, a student at George Washington University and a Pittsburgh native. After the anti-Semitic acts at the Tua Kappa Epsilon House, a fraternity at GW, Emily wrote an op-ed titled, Colleges Have an Anti-Semitism Problem and No Solution. Ms. Linder, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. So could you provide an overview of what happened at GW and what, like, what you wrote in your op-ed? Uh, yeah, so it was the weekend of Halloween, so college Halloween can get a little wild, um, but nobody expected what happened was that um, they, I woke up like the next day, it was like a Saturday, I think, and it was um, somebody had gone into, or like multiple people, we don't know if they were students, because our campus is in the city, and you are supposed to be able to like buzz into any building, but doors get left open on occasion when it comes, if like you're in a house or whatever, it's a little different. Um, we don't know if it was a student, we don't know if it was a random person, um, came into one of the Jewish fraternities on campus and um, took like their, it wasn't necessarily their Torah, because I don't think they kept a Torah there, but it was like a, a for lack of a better word, like a prop Torah was what they used to signify it. And um, they covered it in detergent and threw it on the ground and just completely desecrated the um, text. And so... Um, the many of the student orgs came out very quickly with a response uh, about you know standing with the Jewish student community and how they condemned the act. The administration, particularly the president of the university, took a little bit longer, and then they also put his statement underneath a different Instagram post as a comment. So nobody really knew what was going on, um, and it just felt very like we are sorry that this happened. Period. Mm -hmm. So, one goal of Gen Z Jews is to get our generation involved, and many people feel the way that you do, but don't really take the action like you did. Now, I know that being from Pittsburgh, anti-Semitism has become a lot more personal in like the past few years, so what really motivated you to write your op-ed? So I actually, I come from a community, I am from Pittsburgh, but um, I live in a part of the South Hills where there are not a lot of Jewish people. Um, I live, um, when, I, when I graduated in high school, I was the only Jewish kid in my whole class. Um, there was like a max of like, I think when I was in school, four Jewish kids in the whole, in the whole building oh of the high school. And two of them, one was my brother and the other two were li related. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Growing up in a really not Jewish community, um, I, you know, naturally, especially when you're a kid and you're going to the same school and you're like the figurehead Jewish kid from time to time, you're going to get a lot of flack. Um, you're going to get a lot of questions that aren't meant to be offensive that end up being offensive mm -hmm. or a lot of questions that are meant to be offensive. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things like that. And when I came to college, I assumed everybody had had that experience. I was like, oh, yeah, the time, and then I'd talk about it, and they were like, no, that's not normal. That doesn't mm -hmm. happen everywhere. And I was surprised, because I'm talking to my Jewish friends, and they're like, no. Like, that stuff like that <laughs> never happened to me. And I was like, oh. So when I came to college, and I learned that it's not like that anywhere, and that GW has a very, like, thriving, wonderful Jewish community. The Hillel is wonderful. That's the place I, like, mainly associate with. Um, I was like, yeah, we're in the clear. We're good to go. Like, this is great. Um, and then this happens. And I was like, I thought this didn't happen everywhere. Uh -huh. um, and it was really frustrating, I think, because last year, I, GW is a wonderful place. It's very, it's a very political school being in the capital. And the Israeli-Palestinian conflict really polarized certain students um, into, you know, it's a, it's, the GW is more of a leftist school. Um, and a lot of the like community from time to time was very in their pro Palestinian. They were anti Jewish, uh, without realizing it. Mm -hmm. And so um, when stuff like this happens, they they sent out a lot of emails last year um, regarding different groups being discriminated against. That was super great. It was super supportive of those communities. There was not one email for the Jewish community during that time. Shocker. Um, which I understand why the university would not take a stand 
because we had a lot of international students, and that is fair. Um, but I think they should have provided support outlets through the university for both um, people who felt affected by both sides. Um, I think they should have provided support like they did for everything else, but they didn't. And that's because the university takes the responsibility of like making sure Jewish students are safe and they put that on the Jewish organizations instead of the university taking action, Mm -hmm. which was my main problem with a lot of what GW did is that when something happens, GW tells the Jewish organizations on campus to like go mitigate the damage, Um, Mm -hmm. which is funny because it's not, it's, it's not happening. Like, you know, through those organizations, it's happening through your your university and the people that aren't involved in them, Mm -hmm. most likely. So that was one of my major reasons. So I wrote the article because I was mad, I guess is the um, simple way of saying it. And I had sent it to the, I started with the school paper, um, the GW Hatchet. And I guess my pitch wasn't necessarily super in depth because I wasn't necessarily, I hadn't absolutely written everything yet. But I was rejected because I was told that there was too much on that topic and that they didn't, uh, they had things in print, like ready to be printed already and that they weren't looking for another um, person to talk about the event that had occurred. Um, I then tried to like send it to a few other little things, but the Jewish Chronicle finally took me and I felt, I was like, thank you for listening to me actually, Uh (laughs) because I got rejected three or four times before I found someone to take anything. Um, so I was angry, but um, I was definitely so mad that I was really determined to get it somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so why do you think that anti-Semitism is not a problem that universities like GW are really focused on? It's, I think it comes in veiled ways, and it's incredibly layered. Um, it's not as easy as calling someone a name. Um, and I don't think that anti-Semitism gets the specific attention that it deserves um i know that in our what i can remember from our training um there's a lot of like there we were like required to do as freshmen and stuff like that you know like the non-discrimination training um and i i think there was like something to say about i think there was one jewish example but it's one of those examples from my memory that's like yes this is obviously wrong like, mm-hmm. you don't look Jewish, like that example, but yeah. it, it comes up in a lot of different ways um, because it's not as easy as being called a name anymore or like mm-hmm. swastikas. It doesn't there's, come up like that. There's so many that. Like, levels of it in today's society. There are. And when you ignore the non the non as problematic levels, they become problematic. Exactly. Also, I think there's a big problem with um, people not being held accountable for anti-Semitism. So students don't want to report it because they either, A, don't want to be criticized for being too sensitive. Because I used to get that all the time. It was like, well, if I say something I saw, they're just going to either, A, tell them to apologize to me and move on, and no repercussions are actually going to be taken. Or B, they'll be like, oh, well, you can't say anything around her because she's too yeah. sensitive. Like, she's really soft. Um, so I think that it comes up in veiled ways. And I don't think that educators and staff are trained enough to mitigate the veiled ways in which it shows up, whether it be anti-Semitism or racism or any kind of discrimination. The underlying problems aren't addressed because no one is really ever held accountable. And I think that it's hard to decide when students want to even come forward with stuff because it's like, well, they called me a a name. Okay. How much trouble should I even worry about getting them in? And I have to go through that with them and they're not going to change anyway. So I think Mm -hmm. there needs to be a more holistic education on how discrimination isn't just calling people names and deliberately excluding them and being an outward racist. Um, I think there's a lot of veiled things and that needs to be discussed more. So I, I really admire that you like modeled your Jewish Jewry kind of for Hillel and kind of to show that you are Jewish. So how important do you think it is for Gen Z Jews to really show their Jewish pride in today's world? I think it's important and I think it's hard. Um, as I wrote in my article, my mom, she was like, if you, you know, the capital was 
pretty pretty volatile at the time. I'm a sophomore, but I was home when the insurrection, everything happened, and the city just, it can get a little rowdy. Mm -hmm. um, and so my mom, she was like, like, wear your Jewish jewelry. Like, don't, don't let people see it. Don't give them a reason to know that you are what you are because someone's going to come after you. Mm -hmm. And the harsh reality of it is, is that she's not wrong. And that's, and now that's more evident than mm -hmm. ever that yeah. she isn't wrong. Um, but I did it. I, instead, I like modeled it for Hill International, and they were like, they were looking for like people to um, take some pictures in our new building, which is gorgeous. And um, I was like, I'd be down. And they were asking us to like show our little jewelry. And Hillel International has a really big campaign and like show your star, which is a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of did. I did take a flip, but I think about it almost as um, like reclaiming something because you know we during the holocaust jews were required to mark themselves and now we have the power to in a prideful way instead yeah. of uh, an authoritarian way um i think about it as like reclaiming your identity i understand that not everybody feels comfortable coming outward with their jewish identity because not everyone around them is going to be accepting of that yeah um it's hard i think it's important i think it's good if you want to do it but if you're not comfortable doing it, I have to say I respect that. It's not easy. Yeah. So what advice do you have for high school students and college freshmen who are thinking about anti-Semitism and starting college? I think you're going to have trouble finding any, sto any school that doesn't have it. A, a pretty, I mean, probably a good issue about it. I think it's incredibly laced in the college system right now. I don't think this is a uniquely GW problem. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with the approach GW took to mitigating it and the fact that it really wasn't a response that was specialized to the event that took place. Um, it was just a blanket response. I have a problem with that. Yeah. Um, I think that any college, though, is going to have these issues. GW is a very good school, and the Jewish community is fantastic, and we have a brand new building. It's great. Um, this happened. I don't like the university did, but as far as being a Jewish student, yeah, I feel wary, but also I know I'm supported by a pretty big Jewish population. Um, anywhere you have Jewish students, you're going to have anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because you'd expect it to pop up in places like Alabama or like the Deep South, yeah. but if there are no Jews to to hate yeah. they're not going to get reported um so i have a, it's it's really it's a it's a very hard decision i would say um follow you know choose your education however you'd really like if having an important like if having a jewish community is important to you um make sure that your school has a hillel or a chabad or mm -hmm. however makes you comfortable um i think that it's hard to go anywhere where you're not going to have an issue, but I'm happy where I am. I'm happy with my school. I'm not happy with what they did. Mm -hmm. um, not enough to like transfer out, but it's hard. I don't think yeah. you're going to find a school with a Jewish community that hasn't been a victim of anti-Semitism at some point. Mm -hmm. So make sure you surround yourself with people that you know will stand up for you when the time comes is really, or stand with you, um, other Jewish students. So, Make sure that there's a community for you there, or at least you get a feeling that people there are going to support you, Jewish or non-Jewish. Mm -hmm. So what is your call to action for other college students in similar situations across the country? And how do you think that Gen Z leaders can really work together to fight anti-Semitism and not, and I, to quote you, not scream into the void? Yeah, um, I think that it's... It's not a fad, I guess, is a really big part of our generation is, you know, posting whatever on Instagram and then not actually doing anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, the thing I think about is a lot of times, we like, like what I refer to, and I've heard it referred to by many up here, so is performative activism is really big in Gen Z. You say, I support this cause, and then you, you do nothing about yeah. it. Um, I mean, not being not racist isn't enough. Mm -hmm. anymore um so i think that i guess the call to action would be to um find a community of people who want to work 
against anti-Semitism with you actively. Because I think that, you know, there's a lot of problems with the world right now. And there is no way that one person can be entirely committed to them all. You can support them all. But there's no way that you can address every social justice issue yeah. as a person that comes across your Instagram feed. Exactly. So you have to find people that anti-Semitism actually speaks to and rally yourself with them if that's your call to action because other people have other mainline concerns, and I get that. Um, <laughs> so I think that it's a matter of finding the right people to both support you and hold you up and be your community and spread your message, I guess, is a good way of, you know, kind of getting your point across um, and finding people it really means something to or making it matter more to people than you thought it once did because Holocaust education is incredibly surface level. Um, so it's hard to convey, you know, modern time anti-Semitism with what you're taught anti-Semitism is in a history class. Mm -hmm. And is there anything else you'd like to say to Gen Z? Um, it's wild out there, but don't be afraid. It's not like, it's a little scary from time to time, yeah. And I know that like, it can be really daunting. And, um, but there's always, for every person that's gonna be against you, there's always gonna be one person who's equally as with you. Um, so be brave. And you do what feels right for you and your identity because it's completely malleable, especially at our age group. So mm. follow your heart, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Linder, thank you so much for coming on today. It was great having you. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>